Hey there, everybody. Now, this is a very interesting thing that happened to me. Now, I <laughs> was just scrolling through. I was just, you know, I normally, at one point, I'll just check the comments just to see what people are commenting on my videos. And color me surprised when I saw a comment that said, Hassan reacted to you. Wait, hold on, what? <laughs> And then immediately, I assumed the worst. I thought that he reacted to my video on him. I immediately assumed the worst. But now, in retrospect, I understand that it makes more sense that he ended up watching this video. Of course, of course it's this video. Because I guess Hassan wanted to learn about the Mexican presidential election that's happening today. So yeah. Color me impressed. Color me shocked that this happened. That <laughs> there, there really ain't much else for me to say. I just genuinely want to see what he thought, if he thought anything of it at all. Let's just see. Let's just get to it. If you're a recurring viewer on the channel, you know that this this isn't the first time this has happened. I've had a two people record and make videos on me. Well, I mean, I've had one person actually make a video on me. Can't see it. I didn't. He didn't come up. But yes, it's bad empanada. Darn it, he, why does comment not show up? Regardless, whatever. Anyways, I just want to see how he reacted to this video. <sighs> Let's just get to it. And I am very late to this trend, aren't I? In preparation for the very important presidential election that is going to be coming up soon. <laughs> no, not that one. I'm talking about the other one. Unfortunately, this is not going to be my continuation. Ah. Uh, Mexico mentioned of the Mr. Beat ripoff series that I did, this is instead going to be me simply giving a refresher of the Mexican political landscape for those who might not know. I find Mexican political culture to be very interesting as much like the nation itself, it is really- I heard a Mexican lady on NPR unironically be asked a question about femicide, which is a massive problem in Mexico. Okay. And she said, a man couldn't handle this. How can a woman? Like an old Mexican lady. I was like, God damn, dude. What the fuck's going on over there? Like the amount of internalized misogyny. You just fuck. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm just reading chat. I shouldn't do it, but whatever straight up are just like like every part of this conversation is so stupid too because like the only boundaries that they're having this issue they're having this conversation on is literally like oh it's a woman now and that's woke like virtually zero mentions of their political positions what their platforms are whether or not they're going to actually follow through on said platforms you know what I mean and it's just I like, oh, well, I Mexico's saw, about to have a woman in charge. I saw it to what many in the West. I saw a chat thing, and it said uh, that machismo is very ingrained in Mexican culture. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Western world have, but has a lot of differences that sets it apart and makes it unique. Let's compare it to my patria, the USA. It has a president. It has a two-chamber legislature. It has a Supreme Court and a federalist type of governance. However... Unlike the United States, there is no electoral college, they have some element of proportional representation, presidents and governors are limited to a one-term limit Wait, whoa. in the United States. Hassan Chatter literally... The one in chat literally just said, they voted for Xochitl? Cringe. States has two viable political parties while Mexico has seven. However, despite the fact that Mexico has seven political parties, there eh. are still rather similar lines in how the parties are and how the Mexican political landscape is comparatively to the United States. One of the biggest elements seems to be most of politics is essentially defined as are you for or against the guy in charge? Not just any woman, but a Zionist one president. Is she a Zionist or are people saying that because she's Jewish? Yeah, they're saying that because she's Jewish. I have not heard her position on Israel at all. I don't know if she's a Zionist. 
She is Jewish, though. And I think a lot of people automatically are like, Ooh, how suspicious. Hold on. I read something in chat. I should stop reading chat. Oh, they're talking about they're talking about him. Stop reading chat. Stop reading chat. Chat, go bye bye. She's also not great in general, but not for the fucking reasons that you think, as far as I understand. To the point where one of the parties literally based their entire identity on that aspect. Considering that she is, as far as I understand, basically AMLO, um, there's no way she's going to deviate from AMLO's position on Israel, which is pretty fucking critical of Israel in general. And I think the only reason why people are saying she's a Zionist is because she's Jewish. True. That's all I'm saying. Fact. You can comp you can criticize her for Nazi being pan at AMLO, but a woman. Okay. But I don't think that's a valid fucking take. Which we'll get to in a bit. But this also gets a little bit complicated because the divides between the parties are not necessarily partisan or ideological as they are in most Western nations. It can be based on a multitude of factors, which we'll again get into in a bit. I guess I should avoid dilly-dallying and just actually get into <laughs> dilly -dally. the parties in Mexico. The first party we'll discuss is the Institutional Revolutionary Party, or Partido Revolucionario Institucional, or the PRI, founded in the year 1929 by Mexican President Plutarco Elias Callas. Callas was the leader of a liberal faction in the Mexican Revolution and was elected under the Social Democratic Laborist Party to succeed his fellow general, Avar Obregón. However, the two were shifting rightward during their tenures and seemingly were heading down a path of authoritarianism and autocracy, which was very odd considering that was literally what was just gotten rid of after the revolution via Porfirio Diaz. Caius, through his harsh persecution of the Catholics during the Cristera War, and Obregón for attempting to break the just instituted one-term precedent. Both of these factors would end up leading to Obregón's assassination before he could take his second term. Caius, seeing all of these issues in the immediate post-war, was afraid of Mexico falling deeper into a civil conflict, so he attempted to break all of the partisan divides by abolishing every single political party in Mexico and reforming them under one party, essentially trying to make it the state party of Mexico, <laughs> a title that it would maintain for 72 uninterrupted years. During this time, it had various ideological shifts. Starting out as a very authoritarian autocratic party without really any semblance of a political ideology, then as a backlash to Caius, their next president, Lazaro Cardenas, shifted the party vastly to the left. Then, when people never really had a backlash against him, the party would shift rightward again, at best being classified as social democratic, but at worst being classified as neoliberal, a shift that they kept maintaining with every succeeding president, to the point where now it is considered the de facto party of the Mexican center. While not explicitly right-wing, they are basically just capitalist neoliberals. Think the Democratic Party's right-wing if it were its own political party. The PRI's longest standing rival is the National <laughs> Action Party, or Partido Acción Nacional, or the PAN, a conservative Catholic party formed in opposition to Lazar Cardenas' socialistic and atheistic agenda. However, as the PRI started to change, so too did the PAN. Not really policy wise, but more in rhetoric. They mostly changed their message as the party opposing the PRI and supporting democracy usually downplaying its more explicit conservative elements, attempting to get people who oppose the PRI to back them, regardless of their political outlook. Such is the case in the 2000 election, where they had managed <laughs> to get socialists to back them by promising that they would not privatize Mexico's petroleum industry, even though that was one of their primary policies since the party's foundation. By the way, they still supported that policy. They just didn't tell them that they supported that policy, which inevitably <laughs> led to their candidate ending up winning in the 2000 election. But then came the big problem. When you build your entire party as the opposition party and running on things you oppose rather than what you're for, when you inevitably have to make it known what you stand for and what you're going to do as the mainstream party, you're going to turn off some people and turn off people they did. Because after electing two presidents, people were so turned off from the pan that in the following election, their candidate ended up getting third. And when one of the former first ladies actively sought the pan's nomination, they refused to have her as the candidate. Now, if you know anything about Western democracies, you know one thing. When there's a party that represents a broad coalition of the center-right voters, there must also come a broad party that represents center-left voters. Now, what's interesting is that these voters have actually gotten to change the party that represents them. Originally, the party that represented the Mexican left was 
the Party of the Democratic Revolution, or Partido de la Revolución Democrática, or the PRD. The party was founded by a man by the name of Cuauhtémoc Cárdenas, son of Lazaro Cárdenas, who was angry at the rightward shift that his father's party was going in and decided to push for a new left-wing force in Mexico. Well, or, and he nearly won on his first try, but the controversial results of the 1980 going in and huh. decided to push for a new left-wing son of Lazaro Cárdenas, who was angry at the rightward shift that his father's party was going in and huh. decided to push for a new left-wing force in Mexico. Well, or, and he nearly won on his first try, but the controversial results of the 1988 election made it so that it was not meant to be. But he was hoping that the massive blowback after that election and the ensuing administration would propel him straight to the presidential palace. Then came the rise of the left-wing guerrilla movement to the Zapatistas and the assassination of the pre's presidential candidates, which made people very distrustworthy of leftward candidates. And unfortunately, party struggles started to... Yeah, they were fucking untrustworthy of left wing candidates because they were like, they're actually super sick. They're too cool, is what people thought. Exactly. Seems like the issue that people had were that. It's based, that's fact. They were too based. They were too based. Seems like the issue that they had was that they were too cool. Form, with one faction of the party being extremely loyal to Quatemoc, while many other factions were trying to make it so that they could move past him for upcoming elections. And things got worse as some of the party heads started becoming cozy to the other two parties in the mainstream Mexican political discourse. Eventually culminating in the PRD Someone's signing a bill video. that would allow the privatization of Pemex, Mexico's state-run petroleum industry, which would culminate in a huge faction of the party to leave and form a new political party. And not that long afterwards, Cuauhtémoc would end up leaving the party as well, which would then turn the party into an empty vacuum, which basically represents the interests of a bunch of really old members of the Mexican left who are nostalgic for Cuauhtémoc Cárdenas, but not too nostalgic to not want to cozy up to the rest of the Mexican political elite. The party that would end up taking its place as the torchbearer of the Mexican left would be the National Regeneration Movement, or Movimiento Regeneración Nacional, or Morena. This party was founded by two-time PRD presidential candidate Andres Manuel López Obrador in 2014 in order to translate my, a youth-based my goat political movement in Mexico into a new political party, viewing the PRD negatively for voting with the pre and the pan to deregulate Pemex. Despite this, Morena doesn't necessarily stray too far from the PRD ideologically. The party is simply being made up by the people who were the left wing of the PRD. The biggest difference from Morena and the PRD is the fact that Morena Amla, you'll never make me hate you, okay? <laughs> when he came out with the fucking truth of Duendas, did I say it right? When no one else would? I'm sorry. It was over for me, okay? Uh, duendes, not Duendas. Duendes! Mi cabrón. I never heard of that. I never heard of that. I want to look that up real quick. Oh yeah, that part, that thing, that happened. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, the for those who don't know what this is, is when Amlo was just like, yeah, there was like an elf. <laughs> there was an elf that's real. <laughs> like the duendes are real. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's right. He knows the truth, bro. He knows the fucking truth. He knows the <laughs> truth. A lot of you don't. And a lot of you are afraid of a little quirked up, uh, you know, mouth clicks out of the talking about <laughs> boy who is talking about wood elves, okay? And UFOs. How many UFO investigations occurred under AMLO's watch? Who else would do that for you? AMLO is weirdly socially conservative, Pepe Hands. No, I know. Oh, I know. Is he? What? I mean, I know he has that criticism of like the feminism thing. I thought it was just more like, I guess socially moderate i guess like he doesn't really care about social issues like class reductionist like, i'd say that's true maybe the closest thing is like maybe he's slightly in favor of indigenous rights but otherwise eh. they're gonna get you if you keep saying it wait what no they're not gonna get me because i believe them <laughs> amlo's an interesting person because on the one hand he's like uh definitely a fucking weirdo and very socially conservative on a lot of issues. But also on the other hand, I always hear stuff about like nationalization of, of natural resources and, and things of that nature, even though simultaneously it does seem like he was a big, he was like a, he was like supposed to be the anti-corruption candidate. And yet under his watch, 
it almost feels like the military got more beefed up, but still didn't do enough to fucking deal with the cartels. And uh, the police and the federales are, got more corrupt than they were prior. And, you know... And, and pretty much everything he touched, with the exception of, like, uh, more protectionist attitudes... I mean, he, he went along with Donald Trump and Joe Biden's uh, immigration uh, agenda. And things didn't change for the better. Now, uh, am I saying this because I was personally apprehended by Customs and Border Patrol in Mexico and forced to pay a tax of uh, whatever dollar value that they assigned? <laughs> no. I wouldn't say... Uh... That the federales, and I mean, there's something that he said there that are like real, that are fair, like the beefing up the military that did happen under Amlo's watch, big Amlo L, I'll admit that. But say, uh, no wait, he said like more corruption. Uh, I wouldn't say there's more. I'd say they stagnated. They stayed. They stayed around the same level, which is still a problem. <laughs> it's still a problem. Get, don't get me wrong. It's still a problem that it stagnated, even though he ran. Let's like get that number down. But it's one of those things where, unfortunately, hopefully, it's just he's just step one. No, that's not the reason why I'm saying that. There isn't a candidate in Mexico that is anti-corruption. Well, that's not true either. All of them claim to be anti-corruption. That's the truth. Every single politician, every single politician around the world runs on anti-corruption. The truth of the matter is that just doesn't end up happening. Mate, I love you, but you've got a pretty floored understanding of Mexican internal politics. As a Mexican, I'm saying this. Why? Because I said, because I said the Duenda, uh, Duendes thing. Is that why? A song, Cry Baby. Wait, what? Duendes are so scary. Don't do. Don't talk about them. Stop. They will attack. A song, Cry Baby. I think that given, uh, yes, that chatter is right. Your Mexico politics info is wrong. Sorry, <laughs> man. Yeah, no, I think that the reason he does great shit us on, I don't know if you hang out with some Mexican American pro West West weirdos. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm not done. Let me explain something to you. Okay. As far as I understand, uh, this is the reason why I brought up protectionist politics that AMLO has. However, having said that, a lot of people fucking personally think he is like, legitimately like a ride or die socialist or some shit for this reason which isn't true i i think i say in the video like basically at best he's like a left sock down that's basically the fact of the matter i think that's why there's a lot of people who who perceive him as like the the anti-western imperialist uh, choice or something is way more open with the idea of being closer to socialists Due to the fact that AMLO not only has a decent history of radical political activism, combined with the fact that he has aligned himself with many of the pink tie leaders, even- This stuff is good, like, all, all day, every day, and I will, I will openly recognize that. The ones that a lot of social democrats would consider a little too far. However, despite the fact that of what is considered the mainstream of Mexican politics, they would be considered the most radical, the message seems to be resonating really well, as not only did he win by a large margin in the most recent presidential election, Morena has also quickly become the new big political force in Mexico, which puts him in the exact same position that the PAN found themselves in for. When the people who run as outsiders become insiders, what happens next? How's that because Mexico information from American news and papers, like getting your point of view of Palestine from U.S. media? <laughs> How is Maduro too far just the corruption stuff? His actual policies are pretty mid. Um, Maduro is the number one villain in American politics for as long as people pay attention to Venezuela. That is yet to be determined. However, despite the fact that most of Mexican political history for a long time... When people talk about Maduro, they're not actually fucking talking about like currency mismanagement or repression, like political repression. They think he's like out there fucking slaughtering every business owner that has more than $10 in their pocket for sport. Like whatever the fucking incredibly right-wing Venezuelan uh, like agricultural producer and fucking yeah uh they're currently i think hassan's like talking about a lot of the members of the chat because like they're fighting over like too far for uh like because it's like sock dems a lot of people like you know sock dems are liberals they view maduro as like oh he's like super far he's super far left radical blah 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 like it's a lot more of like the perception than it is about like the actual policies which is fair because like, a lot of people do the same thing about AMLO a lot of people claim that AMLO is like all oh, this super far left like radical guy but 
not really, not even remotely. He's basically like slightly left of center. Like, and when I say slightly left of center, I say that in the reference. Like, he's more to the left than center left, I would say, but it's still not far enough to do things. And I also saw like some people in the chat that were also saying like, yeah, that's a photo op. Yeah, yes. But back in the day, he did actually, Emlo was very friendly towards the Zapatistas very early on in his political career. Him, Cuauhtémoc, a lot of them went to the Zapatistas and tried to be mediators in the Zapatista argument, trying to get their needs met by the Mexican government. Granted, it's still not far enough. They inevitably did diverge very much because, again, AMLO, for the most part, is still broadly like a sock dem, and the Zapatistas very much not sock dems. I mean, unless, they're, unless there's a new form of sock dem that I've never heard of. But yeah. In grocery chain owning billionaires in Venezuela that own all the fucking media out there that isn't state media. Whatever the fuck they say to the uh, Americans, it goes. This doesn't mean that he's great. He's certainly no Chavez, and he's not great in, in general, but like... Yeah, I mean, that is true. I I personally like AMLO, but that's because I'm Mexican. I'm Mexican-American, so that, I, I have a bit of a bias, and he's also like the first pink... T <laughs> I, guess I, I guess I should use this comparison. He was my, f he was my first. <laughs> he was my first. But I still acknowledge, like, yeah, uh, uh, like the, the three musketeers of the pink tide... Uh, Chavez, uh, Morales, and Lula, they're, they're, they're leagues above him. <laughs> they're leagues above him. Like, I'll even go so far as to say, at this point, like, Petro and uh, uh, Pepe Mujica are also basically above him. I think he's been portrayed as the perfect villain. ...on time has been focused on these four political parties. Mexico also has three more political parties that, while not as prominent as these guys still hold a very decent amount of power. And to begin this section, we will talk about the Ecologist Green Party of Mexico, or Partido Verde Ecologista de Mexico, or PVEM. As the name implies, this is the Mexican Green Party. However, unlike most Green Parties around the world that are usually placed on the left side of the political spectrum, PVEM, for a long period of time, has been placed ideologically on the right side of the political spectrum. Before anyone goes to the comments, I am fully aware if you look up PVM nowadays, the party is described as center left, but you will see in this section why I do not believe that the political label is genuine for them. Being considered a green conservative political party, oh. one of the most notable things to show its contrast with other green parties was the fact that in 2008, they were the leading force in Mexico to try and reintroduce the death penalty, which made many international greens sever their relationship. That's pretty funny. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> That's such a funny fucking. That is such a fun. Ever their relationship. This says this is the thing about my chroma key chip. That's pretty funny, dude. That. That's awesome. Oh okay. That's such a funny fucking. That is such a funny policy for a green party to advocate <laughs> for. That's awesome. He actually acknowledges my video for That's once. Hilarious. Hassan actually acknowledged my video for once. Wow, that's insane. That's such a funny fucking... That is such <laughs> a funny policy for a Green Party to advocate for. That's awesome. I'm sorry. That's hilarious. Dude, what the fuck? Imagine Jill Stein <laughs> in America being like, Listen, guys. I care about the environment a lot. Okay? Which is why we have to execute prisoners. <laughs> okay? Their farts are causing too many emissions... Our prison industrial complex is, is, it's taking up too much space. I am pro labor. I'm pro left. I'm pro reducing carbon emissions. And that is why we have to kill everyone. <laughs> Hassan's just describing eco fascism. <laughs> However, if you thought my description of the PRD as an empty vessel was a little bit lax, well, I would have to argue that the PVM party is way more of an empty vessel than the rest of the parties, with them facing many accusations that they are not really a legitimate party in any sense of the word. For starters, I should mention this. Given the fact that their name has ecologist in it, you would think that the party is very environmentally conscious. Well, in a 2000 interview with the party's leader, Jorge Gonzalez Martinez, he was asked how serious he was about environmentalism, to which he responded with, to me, ecology is the least important thing to me. I represent interests. 
very odd thing for what is allegedly the environmentalist party in Mexico oh, to say. <laughs> I should also mention the fact that the party's leader is the son of the party's founder, which has led to many accusations that the party is just a tight-knit group of friends and family to form a small political cult in the country. But the biggest thing to show how empty of a vessel that PVM actually is, is the fact that PVM, in order to remain politically relevant, has essentially formed a symbiotic relationship with whatever party is in charge at the time. During the early years of the party's existence, the PRI was the party in charge, so they aligned with the PRI. Then when the PAN was in charge, they aligned with the PAN. And now that Morena is in charge, they're aligned with Morena. And if I were to hedge my bets, I would say that no matter what party's in charge, they're going to endorse and back and form a coalition with them. Don't believe me? Well, come back to this video in like 10 years and see which party they're in alliance with. Speaking of alliances, there is one more political party that makes a big use of political alliances to stay afloat, being the Labor Party, or Partido del Trabajo, or PT. Mex Mexico is such a weird place. Cartel has so much power over everyday lives and people. My family, for example, are either pro-cartel or pro-capital punishment for all cartel members. They don't consider economic reforms to change the tide all that often. Mm. I mean, that makes sense. It's the elephant in the room. It's understandable to have... It's understandable <laughs> People to are have excited the, for the Labor Party. The, uh, the, the major problem not yet addressed for so many years in, in either direction, no matter what your opinion is. They're lulaying in chat. All of the economic reforms, one, take too much, uh, take too long to implement, and two, oftentimes don't get implemented at all. This goes openly socialist political party. The party of people who thought the Cardenas family was too moderate. PVM and PT have a lot of very odd parallels. They were both founded around the same time, they mostly focus on electoral alliances, and they represent a tight-knit niche in Mexican politics. The main difference being that PT is more consistent in using this to spread their left-wing message. After losing their first solo candidate, they have consistently endorsed the mainstream left-wing option in the election, leading to it basically being almost as if it were a satellite party, with them very rarely going in opposition to whoever is the mainstream left-wing option. In fact, a state that showed this well was the state of Zacatecas, where a prominent left-wing political family in the area were PRD diehards before leaving to join PT and build them up, before becoming lead figureheads in the formation of Morena. So despite the fact that this party is probably the least successful of all the parties in this video, it actually has a lot more staying power than its vote returns would actually indicate. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Citizens Movement, or Movimiento Ciudadano, or MC. Or if you are a Mexican who is watching this video, you may know them as This is a party that has gone through a lot of changes, but also hasn't. The Citizens Movement was founded in 1999 <laughs> by a of young left-leaning pre-members who wanted to change the course within Mexican politics in the new millennia. A new course for the country, as they said. Why make a new political party as opposed to joining the PRD, you may ask? Well, they viewed the PRD's brand of leftism as becoming an old guard, as well as not meeting the needs of the next generation, particularly in regards to social issues like feminism. The party also identifies itself as social democratic and broadly center-left, but it's a little bit different from the other parties that you might consider center-left in Mexico. Not explicitly opposing capitalism, but arguing it should be fairer, which in the most recent Mexican presidential election has essentially led to them becoming a third force in Mexico, kind of becoming the de facto center, rather than joining with one coalition and trying to be 100% pro-AMLO, or joining the other coalition and being 100% anti-AMLO, they've decided to work with him issue by issue, particularly on things regarding, again, feminism, or LGBTQ rights, or marijuana, but opposing him on certain other issues. Which has led to many people to actually take a look at this party more seriously than the rest of them, as they have made a point to refuse joining an alliance or friendship with the Mexican political elite, leading to the MC to become very prominent in Mexico. Don't count them out quite yet. So yeah, that's basically all I have to say on this topic. Maybe check in in the future to see if I have a video on the upcoming Mexican presidential election. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and click the bell to find find a future video. Yeah, I feel like the fact that it, the fact is that the PRI was not created to be a democratic political party that competes every six years of the polls, but try to legitimize the dictatorship of the Mexican Revolution by simulating a supposed democracy it was conceived as the Communist Party of the Soviet Union to have a symbiotic relationship with the party state. The difference is that the general secretary of the CPSU was consequently head of state in Mexico. The president emanated from the PRI, was the owner of the party for six years, which gave him medical <laughs> and professional power to personally appoint the successor. 
Yeah, but the point is, that's not supposed to happen. Like, ultimately, what's supposed to happen is it just stays loyal to the immortal science of Marxist-Leninism, and this gives you broad powers of making, you know, multiple decade-long agendas and following through on them and not have the fucking party's uh, ideological perspective shift to diametrical opposites. The advantage of, of having, like, one major party filled to the brim with, like, unique voices and different ideologies is that those ideologies get mentioned, but ultimately you're supposed to have an advantage. An advantage being that as long as it's uh, directed uh, by... As long as it's directed by uh, the interests of the working class, <laughs> it should have the capacity to, you know, move the country in the in the right direction and engage in and not be um, not be damaged by short-term profit-seeking uh, motives. His past election, the past election has been interesting because Pan and Pre, which are basically like Dems and Reps, have teamed up to go against a more leftist party, albeit one that isn't perfect. Morena is not 100% leftist, though. I didn't say that. No, yeah, that's fair. If you aren't pro-capital punishment or climate denialism, you're just low-int spec build. Sure. <laughs> Ultimately, I think Mexico is in the whims of the United States of America when it comes to its own internal politics more than people care to admit or recognize, but I think that's a reality that most Mexicans do recognize. Now this covered the president. On December 1st, Mexico will get a new president. Former mayor of Mexico City, Andres Manuel... Well, that's pretty much all I gotta say, because cause he don't watch... He's, I, I'm, not, I'm not free booty all this other stuff. I freebooted the Hassan watching me. That's good. I mean, I guess he, I guess he liked it. <laughs> I wouldn't know. He, he was eating most of the time. But oh well. <laughs> Man, the bad not video was way better. He was more mean to me. <laughs> all right, that's pretty much all I gotta say. So catch you on the flip side. And if you're a Hassan fan watching this. Congrats.